Hey everyone. Good evening for most of you. It's still like afternoon here in Chicago. Hopefully, oh wait, not in Chicago, in California. It's still in Chicago mode. Hey, hey everyone. I'm so excited. We're going to be making, oh, I love you guys so much too. We're going to be making gochujang mushroom pasta. Oh, you guys are so sweet. I love you. Um, this is my kitchen in California right now. This is a brand new kitchen. We've just moved in like literally a few weeks ago. It hasn't even been a month. And I'm so excited to show this kitchen off. It all, oh, you guys are so sweet, seriously. I'm really excited to be sharing this recipe. Hey, oh yeah, gochujang. You know where it's at, gochujang. Um, and we're gonna be going through this literally step by step. I have like all the ingredients here. I'm really excited. Hopefully you were able to check out the recipe in advance. And some of you may even have the ingredients like on hand, gochujang, some olive oil, mushrooms, garbanzo beans. If you don't, like you can just kind of make it up as you go along. This is a really easy pasta dish. It's intended for that night when you're super tired and you're like, I don't wanna cook anything. I really wanna eat something delicious. This is that dish. So I'm really excited for all of you to join me. So what we're actually going to do is we are going to be splitting the screen so you can see the recipe while we're cooking. And we're also going to be switching from sort of my, you know, top down view so you can see this is the pasta that I'm going to be using today, Barilla. Um, I have a friend who works at Barilla. He's a chef and he is so talented. And I love that they've come out with this whole grain version of their spaghetti. And so that's what we're going to be using today. And then um, we're also going to be switching back to the front facing so that you can see me when we're talking and things like that. If I shift my view a little bit and it looks like I'm not making eye contact with you, please do not be alarmed. I'm actually trying to make more eye contact with you. It's just that my laptop, which is where I can see all of your chatting, is over here, right here. So that's why I might look like I'm looking not at the camera. Uh, this is where my camera is. So I'm so excited to do this live. This is my first time doing a YouTube live with the entire YouTube community, as well as the TKV meal planner community, who's you know been invited to join us, as well as the Instagram community. I'm just really, really excited to do this. Oh, you guys are so, can you see me? I can see you. Um, I'm a young man who makes Korean food. Oh, wow, that's so great. So this is, um, not a traditional Korean dish, let me tell you, um, but it was one that I kind of just like took whatever was in my kitchen at the time. I had like a boatload of mushrooms. You know how that happens where you're like, I don't know how many mushrooms I need as you go to the grocery store and you end up coming home with way too many mushrooms and you end up using like three of them. So that's actually what happened. And I was like, well, I need to figure out a way to use these mushrooms because I can't let them go to waste. So I took some mushrooms and I took some of my favorite flavors out of my Korean pantry, gochujang, ganjang, soy sauce, and things like that. And I kind of created this pasta. I served it to my sister-in-law who's a native Korean. She just came here from you know Korea a few years ago and she absolutely fell in love with this dish. All right, everyone. So. We are 4.30 PST, 7.30 Eastern Time, 6.30 Central Time for those of you who are in my hometown of Chicago. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Korean Vegan Live. We are going to be doing gochujang mushroom pasta today. I'm really, really excited to do this. So for those of you who don't know, I have a meal planner. It's called the Korean Vegan Meal Planner. Everyone's always asking me like, where are your recipes? Can I have your recipes? And a lot of the recipes are, you know, sort of floating around the internet on my website, on my YouTube channel. But now what I do is I just put all of my recipes in this huge catalog of over 2000 plant-based recipes in the Korean Vegan Meal Planner. Now, as part of a Korean Vegan Meal Planner member, you also get free access to these live cooking demonstrations once a month. That's what I do. I get on YouTube Live and we do cooking demonstrations or Q and A's and that type of thing. So today, because I'm in California and I wanted to celebrate our new kitchen, we're offering this to everyone for free, whether or not you're a Korean vegan meal planner member or not. But I am going to be showing you what the meal planner is because that's where the recipe is. So if you want to see the recipe, I've got to show you where it is. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm actually going to try and split my screen here. There we go. 
And so that way you can see that is my meal planner. And let's split the screen so you can still see me too. Ah, hey, everyone. Okay. So this is my meal planner and um, it has all the recipes, all my recipes. And these are like my favorite recipes that you can see right here on your screen. Let's pull up the mushroom gochujang pasta recipe. Look at look at this. See, look at all these delicious. Oh, there we go. Here it is. The mushroom gochujang pasta recipe. And as you can see, it also includes a video tutorial on how to make that recipe as well as the entire recipe itself. I'm going to try and shrink this so that you can see as much of the ingredients as possible. Hopefully you can see that on the split screen now of my mushroom gochujang pasta right here. So this is really cool. I'm just going to kind of show you guys. Um, it not only includes the recipe and photos, in many cases a video, it also includes nutritional information. For those of you who are counting your macros, like I want to make sure that I'm getting all the carbs and the protein and the vitamins, um, the nutrition tab is going to show you exactly what the nutrition information is for each of the recipes in the meal planner. And then of course, if if you are an online grocery shopper like I am, you can also add this to your grocery list. Um, the meal planner is connected to um, Instacart so that you can have all of the ingredients for that particular recipe or any of the other recipes in your weekly menu that you kind of save in your file like I had. You can have those delivered directly to your home. So the meal planner is fantastic. I love being able to share these recipes with you in this way. But hey. Hey everyone, congratulations on the new place. Here are some housework. Oh, you guys are so sweet. I love you all. I have to say like YouTube has just been so amazing. The community is just incredible. I know the meal planner community is amazing. I'm introducing you to each other, meal planner members, YouTube members, introducing you all to each other in case you haven't met before. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this live is to make food. All right, so let's get started with that. Um, we're going to be using this, which is, in case you are just joining, a whole wheat, whole grain pasta. So we are not gluten-free in my house, but we do tend to try and avoid as much refined flour as possible during the week because it doesn't sit well with our tummies anymore. Um, I've noticed that whole grain pasta tends to sit better with our stomachs than just fully white pasta. So that's what we're gonna be using here. As noted on the box, you can see it has more fiber. It's an excellent source of fiber. You all know, especially if you are joining from Instagram, that I am obsessed with fiber. So that's what we're going to do. I've actually already got a pot of water on the stove here, on my stove top. We're going to get that to a nice rolling boil. It takes about seven to eight minutes for this pasta to come fully al dente. So we're going to kind of you know, gauge where we are on things by making sure that we're not putting this in too early or too late. Okay, so I'm going to get my pasta water. Now, one tip about pasta water, you should all know this because I'm sure you all really, really good at cooking. You do want to salt your pasta water pretty generously. If you're watching your sodium, because I know some of you are, then you can skip that step. I uh, actually have low sodium. I'm on the lower side uh, when it comes to sodium, probably because I'm always running. And so I generously salt my water because that's gonna help with flavor. So we're gonna just salt our water here while it's getting nice and hot. All right, so now that we've done that, I'm gonna put this aside. Let's start prepping our veggies. And of course, the number one veggie for our mushroom gochujang pasta is going to be our mushrooms. Look at how gorgeous these mushrooms are. I mean, these are just from our regular local grocery store. These are cremini mushrooms. Um, and what you're going to see is they actually, are, I think they're also baby portobello mushrooms. And so what we're going to do is we want to give them a clean. Now, you may not know this, but mushrooms love to suck up water. They love to suck up liquid. And the problem with that is that they get really soggy. I'm not a fan of soggy mushrooms. Some people like soggy mushrooms. I don't like soggy mushrooms. I like my mushrooms to have a little bit of texture to them, right? So in order to avoid having completely soggy mushrooms, what we want to avoid is having them be subjected to too much liquid. And that includes during the cleaning process. So what I always get nervous about seeing is, you know, my husband who's not as 
experienced in the kitchen is, oh, I need to wash the mushrooms. So he just sticks them in a bowl and runs some cold water over them. No, that is not how you clean your mushrooms. What you want to do instead is I'm just going to get like a paper towel here and then I'm going to wet it with a little bit of water. Okay, just get it really damp. That's all you need. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to pat, 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 get rid of any excess dirt on our mushrooms there. And that's all it needs. It doesn't need to be soaked in water for you know several minutes or be put under running water. That is going to lead to super soggy mushrooms. And that is not what we want. So what we're just doing is we're giving our mushrooms a gentle pat with a damp towel. Who did I learn this from? I learned this from the queen of at-home cooking, Miss Rachel Ray, my favorite, favorite Food Network star. Uh, she was in charge of 30-minute meals, which is basically her and Mangchi. If you're on YouTube, you know who Mangchi is. Mangchi and Rachel were basically responsible for everything I know about cooking. Any suggestions on substitutes? I don't like mushrooms. Oh, well, you know, it's hard to find a substitute for mushroom gochujang pasta uh, for the mushrooms, but I got you. I totally understand where you're coming from. What I would do is perhaps instead of mushrooms, let's see, what can we use? If you're not opposed to, for example, um, uh, field roast, it's one of my favorite sort of alternative meat substitutes. I love field row sausage, like their fennel Italian sausage. That would be wonderful here. Um, what you could also do is if you don't want to use a processed, you know, meat alternative, you can just get some really, really, really extra, extra firm tofu. Slice it up really, really thin, like almost like deli meat, and you can use that for this recipe as well. That is gonna give you a lot of wonderful texture and crunch as well. So that's kind of a substitute that I would use. All right, so now that we've cleaned our beautiful mushrooms, I, these are really big mushrooms. They're like way bigger than the ones we would see in Chicago. Um, so, you know, you're gonna have to kind of gauge how many mushrooms you want to use based upon their size and also your preference for mushroominess, right? Is anyone else allergic to mushrooms? Again, if you are allergic to mushrooms, then my suggestion would be, again, going for maybe like a field roast or some type of meat alternative or of coast course tofu which is basically my favorite meat alternative all right so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to slice up these mushrooms there we go okay I'm just going to run my knife through them like this oh my house is already starting to smell so delicious one of the reasons I love mushrooms so much is they provide so much earthiness and satisfying like kind of groundedness in a recipe. They also provide so much intense flavor. And people always ask me like, well, is vegan, like going vegan hard? Like, did you find it hard? Do you miss meat and things like that? And I think the answer that I always give them is that when you replace meat, with very high intense flavor ingredients like mushroom or gochujang or soy sauce. These are, you know, intense flavor bombs. You don't really miss the meat because the texture and the protein you can always get from things like tofu or beans and things like that. It's really the flavor and in some cases the fat that you might be missing when you go vegan. Well, fat you can take care of, right? Add some extra virgin olive oil, some avocado. I mean, there's so many wonderful, healthy fats out there for you to choose from. And then texture, you got the tofu. Flavor, flavor is where you're gonna lean in on the mushrooms, right? You're gonna lean in on gochujang or miso, if that's what you like, or fermented soybean paste like tenjang. These are all things that are part of the Korean vegan pantry. Oh my gosh, look at how gorgeous. Can we just stop and appreciate just how beautiful these mushrooms look, right? Um, if you're taking a little bit longer to cut them, that's totally okay. Go at your own speed. I don't want you to hurt yourself. <laughs> so take a breath if you need to, because what we're now gonna do is I can hear that my water is boiling. So we're gonna add our pasta 
to the water. Actually, you know what, let's hold off on that because I don't want my pasta to cook too early. So I'm actually gonna turn down the heat on my, there we go, turn it down a little bit so that it's at a nice rolling boil. It's ready for me when I wanna add my pasta. Hi Janelle, everyone Janelle Eats has joined the chat. Everyone hopefully knows Janelle Eats. She makes the most delightful videos. She takes us all over the world with her. She's so wonderful and her energy is incredible. She has been one of the true pleasures of joining the YouTube community because I got a chance to meet her and she's amazing. Very nice looking mushrooms indeed. Yes, I totally agree, Emily. Um, wondering prices, fresh produce around nation and globe. That's a really good question. I mean, and I think maybe that's another reason why we should be very open to substitutes. Maybe mushrooms aren't really available where you are, or maybe they are available, but they're ridiculously expensive. I mean, that certainly has happened in Chicago when mushrooms are not in abundance. And so if you can't find mushrooms, my hope is that, like I said, you can find some tofu. Tofu is usually available everywhere at every level of grocery store and of all different kinds. So hopefully you'd be able to find that as well um, to substitute if you can't find mushrooms. All right, so now that we have chopped up all our mushrooms, let's see, what else do we need here? We've got some, uh, let's see, soy sauce, maple syrup, hummus, cremini mushrooms, garlic, course, we're going to need some garlic. So again, you can see on the left, the split screen of the recipe from the Korean vegan meal planner. And now we're just going to mince up some garlic. Okay, so I got to be honest with you. And if you've done these cooking classes with me before, you know that I'm not I'm I just hate prepping garlic. Okay, it's not my favorite thing. I don't know if any of you had to do this when you were little, but when I was little, when grandma had to give me something to do in the kitchen and, you know, I could not be trusted with knives. <laughs> I couldn't be trusted with any of the really important stuff. So my job was always to pound the garlic. That was my job. That was Joanne's job growing up was pound the garlic in the mortar pestle. Um, so I don't know if any of you have had that job, but that was my job. And maybe because of that, I have developed this sort of conditioned reluctance to, to prep garlic. But I have to say, I have cooked with the pre-minced garlic that you can get at the store. And I have obviously cooked with the fresh garlic that I mince up on my own. And in my opinion, yes, you absolutely can taste the difference. So look, if you're totally in a bind or you hate it even more than I do, then go ahead and use the pre-minced stuff. No one's, no one's gonna judge you, no, no one's gonna tell, okay? But if you have a little bit more patience than perhaps I do, I do highly recommend that you try and get fresh garlic and mince it up like we're doing here. So I've got like, you know, it's like this clove is really small. So I'm doing like a clove and a half. And we're just going to run our knives through it like this. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be pretty. That's the one good thing about the Korean vegan recipes and all the recipes in the meal planner, none of them. None of them are designed by Michelin starred chefs. If that's what you want, then you're not in the right place. Let me tell you, I am not a Michelin starred chef. As we discussed earlier, I learned basically everything I know from YouTube and Rachel Ray on the Food Network. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like all of you guys, right? I'm like all of you. And so all of the food that you're going to see in my recipes are really going to be for the home cook or, you know, the professional who's come home after work or, you know, the tired parent who's just like, what can I get really quick and easy done for the family? That's what these recipes are about. So we've got our garlic. We've got our mushrooms. What else do we need here? I think we need, um, let's see, I'm like having trouble. My eyes are getting so bad. Oh, okay. So we need some mush, uh, some onion, actually. Let's pull down the recipe so that you all can see the full. There we go. Okay. So we need, oh, a lot of onions. I love onions and onions are so good for you. So as I think I mentioned earlier on, you know, the reason I'm so obsessed with fiber, I don't know if you have like heard of this guy named Dr. B. Bolsowitz. He wrote this amazing book called Fiber Fueled. And it's interesting because I used to be like, you know, a gym rat. I would go to the gym and I would do like weightlifting. I was all about like proving like I don't need to be not vegan in order to build muscle mass. And I did. I built a significant amount of muscle mass in a very short period of time. But 
One of the things that I thought was so interesting is the woman who I was sort of consulting with, she's like a bodybuilding physique competitor. And she was saying, you know, a lot of times people forget that fiber is also really, really important when it comes to building a balanced diet, but also a really strong body, one that's able to do things like compete in bodybuilding competitions. I thought that was so interesting. And as a result of that, I became really fascinated with the role that fiber plays in not just, you know, how we eat and how we, you know, make food, but also human health. And science suggests that the people who live longest in the world, they're called blue zones. You may have heard of them. You know, raise your hand. I know Dr. B is so amazing, Lydia. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about, the blue zones, like in, I think it's Okinawa, Japan, um, as well as Sardinia in Italy. The common theme among all these people who are living over 100 years old is that they have a very fiber-rich diet. It's not protein. It's fiber. I just think that's so incredible. So I became really interested in fiber and more specifically the gut, like who's interested in gut health, like <laughs> the microbiome, right? I just think that's such a cool conversation to have, like to just discuss like the role that fiber has in these trillions and trillions of living beings that are living in and on us, like on our skin, in our stomach, in our hair, they're kind of all over. And from what I understand, science suggests that the microbiome plays such a huge role in so many different things, anywhere from like gaining or losing weight to your mood. Like, are you moody today? Or are you feeling a little blue? Or are you excitable and happy? Like the microbiome all plays a role in those things, which I think is so like crazy. Like I had no idea that that's how it all worked. Anyway, I was talking to Dr. B the other day on Instagram in connection with his book, which I'm sure is, is going to be a New York Times bestseller. If it isn't already, it's a fiber-fueled cookbook. And I asked him, like, hey, like, when people are trying to figure out, like, the best way to plan their meals and their plate of food, what should they be thinking about? Like, should they be just focused on finding that perfect vegetable, whether it's broccoli or kale or spinach? And he said that really the key is biodiversity, making sure that whatever it is that you're preparing for your meal that day is representative of a lot of different plants, not just a single one. Like kale is obviously a great green. It's a great vegetable, broccoli, great vegetable. But sometimes more important than picking on those really elite, like, you know, powerful antioxidant busting vegetables is just making sure you've got a lot of them. So here we've got that covered. We've got garlic, which is a vegetable. We've got this onion, which is a vegetable. We've got we've got mushrooms, which is a plant. We're going to actually garnish this with a little bit of chive later. So we've got a lot of plants already represented in this. And then, of course, by using this whole grain pasta for our pasta, we've got grains and we've got the fiber in those grains to help us create this really robust meal for our microbiome, which I'm really excited about. Okay, so like I said, my water has been boiling, so I'm gonna go ahead and dump my pasta. If you are just joining, we're making gochujang mushroom pasta from the Korean Vegan Meal Planner. And we're gonna add our pasta into our pot of hot, boiling, salted water. Again, if you're watching your sodium, you don't need to salt your water. If you don't have a sodium issue, then go ahead and add some salt to your water. We're going to just dump this in here. All right. And it takes about seven to nine minutes for this pasta to cook. So just keep that in mind. And I'm just going to use some tongs to make sure that our pasta gets fully soaked in the water. I don't want any of it to burn, right? Nobody wants burnt pasta. All right. So here we go. All right, and we'll check on this periodically throughout our cook. But now we should move on to, let's see, creating our sauce, because we've got all of the lovely ingredients ready for the sauce. Now I'm just going to get a bowl here to put all of our vegetables in. The nice thing about this is we're going to put our mushrooms in, and then we're going to put our garlic in, and we're going to put our onions in. And it's all going to cook together in some really amazing flavors to create this outstanding sauce for the pasta that's currently cooking. 
in our pasta pot. Okay, so here we go. We created a nice clean surface here for our stove top. So um, as you all know, I like to use a portable stove top so that you can see exactly what's going on as I'm cooking. So I've got here a stove top. And what we're gonna do is, let's see here. I've got here sort of a like, um, kind of like, a, it's shaped like a wok, but it's not a wok. It's a, uh, you know, a non-stick surface. And it's much easier for me to use than a wok. I always find woks to be a little bit intimidating. So we're gonna be using kind of, you know, I just want you to see, like, go to the front facing you can see that it's almost like a bowl shaped pan so it's like a pan pot hybrid this is what I love to use when I'm making sort of pasta dishes because then I can just dump the noodles into the pot along with the sauce so that's what we're going to do is we're going to create that sauce and we're going to start by adding some extra virgin olive oil okay another really good oil to use if you don't want to use olive oil is avocado oil that's a fantastic oil to use. If you are, you know, trying to be mindful of the fat that you're putting into your diet, go ahead and measure the olive oil or the avocado oil that you're adding to your recipe. I'm sort of eyeballing it here just because I've done this so many very times. Okay, so I'm just going to lower this heat to about um, medium high. Okay, let's see. Here we go. And I'm just going to lower the screen with the recipe so that again, you guys can see it. There we go, the mushroom gochujang pasta, that's what we're doing here. And our oil is getting nice and hot, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the veggies that we chopped, okay. Go, and while our veggies are cooking, I'm gonna go ahead and check my pasta. Oh yeah. I don't want them sticking together, so I'm just gonna give them a little zhuzh with my tongs here. For those of you who love Rachel Ray as much as I do, you can definitely hear her influence on everything that I do in the kitchen. All right, so you can hear the sizzle and the crackle of our mushrooms. Ooh, look at that. Smells so good in here. Just smells so amazing. Okay, so what I am gonna do is I'm gonna hit this with just a tiny little bit of salt. And we're not adding salt necessarily for saltiness and flavor. What we're doing is we're helping this chemistry that's gonna happen, right? You guys know what osmosis is, right? When you create an environment that has less water, the water that was in the inside comes outside. That's what we're doing. We're drawing out some of the liquid, the juices from the mushrooms and the onion and even from the garlic so that they're there for our sauce instead of trapped inside of our vegetables, right? So that's what we're doing here. Do that. All right. Okay. So now that our veggies are, you know, kind of semi-translucent, I was afraid to get your cookbook in case it was above my level. Oh my gosh, no. No, like it's so not above your level, Emily. Like I, I'm not like a complicated cook. I'm a total, like, let's keep it simple. Um, basically like add, you know, all the ingredients to the pot at once, add some water, boom, done. But that's, that's a classic Korean vegan recipe. And again, it's the same thing with the meal planner, 2000 recipes, very similar to what you're seeing right now. So we're gonna do, oh my gosh, it smells so so amazing right now. I can't even tell you how amazing it smells. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to create more flavor by adding a dimension of flavor. We're gonna add some ingredients here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some gochujang. So gochujang, for those of you who are new to Korean food or Korean cuisine, gochujang, as you can see, looks a lot like tomato paste, right? So if you do a lot of Italian food, particularly if you make a lot of Italian red sauces, then you're probably familiar with tomato paste. It looks a lot like tomato paste, but it doesn't taste exactly like tomato paste. It actually tastes a lot more like sriracha, but the texture is a paste as opposed to sort of a sauce. So if you're familiar with sriracha, that's kind of the heat level that we're talking about. And it has that sort of sweetness 
to it as well. But what you'll notice about Korean gochujang sauce is that it also has this sort of funkiness, almost like what you would expect in a cheese, right? Or like a soy sauce, because the base ingredient of gochujang is actually fermented soy paste. So that's why you're going to get that sort of interesting, funky, like super like umami taste. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of soy sauce. Again, if you are gluten free or if you're watching your sodium um, or even if you don't want to use soy, you could always try some, um, what's it called? Aminos, coconut aminos, or you can even add tamari for those of you who are gluten intolerant. And you can do the low sodium varieties of all of those. We're just going to do, do that. All right. And then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of water. I'm actually going to try and take some of the pasta water from my boiling pot of pasta, and we're going to add that. Oh. We're going to lower the heat here to simmer. And just look at that. That is the sauce that is going to be coating. Oh, it smells so good. I can't even like tell you how good it smells right now. That's the sauce that's going to be coating our pasta. All right. Speaking of pasta, I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to take a little bit in my measuring cup. I'm actually going to just reserve a little bit of extra pasta water just in case. I'm just going to do that now. So I've got this pasta water on the side. If you don't want to use pasta water or if it's like too hot or like, you know, you're just not comfortable with pasta water, just use straight up regular water. Or if you want to really make it fancy, you can use vegetable broth. That's another fantastic option. So I'm going to go ahead and I think my pasta is just about done here. I'm going to drain that pasta out and get it all ready to go. Let's see here. I got to get a towel. Oh my goodness. I wish you all were in my kitchen right now so that you could smell what's happening. Hopefully some of you all are actually cooking along with me and are smelling the exact same smells that I am because it is just marvelous right now. Okay, here we go. So my sauce is just kind of getting nice and thick here on low heat. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and add our pasta. Ooh, perfectly cooked pasta here. Ooh, it's really hot. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to add this directly to our pot here. And you can see it is al dente. And what that means is it's not like exactly like perfectly like the softness that you would exactly want when you're about to eat it because it is going to finish cooking here in the pot. And what you want to do is you want to agitate it just like you see me doing with my tongs. And the reason for that is that agitation, what that will do is it will help create an emulsification. So emulsification is sort of a fancy word for binding. What we really want is our sauce to actually stick to our noodles. And the way we do that is by agitating this sauce, which has some fat in it from the extra virgin olive oil, with the starchiness of the noodles along with the pasta water that we added, together with heat, all of that creates an emulsification, which is what allows the sauce to bind to our pasta. So last but not least, just because people are always asking me, where's the protein? Where's the protein? So I am going to add some protein to this. I'm going to add some chickpeas, which is one of my favorite ways to really amp up the protein in any dish in a super like healthy way. So we're going to add some chickpeas over here. All right. And I think it calls for like a quarter cup of chickpeas. And finally, to really make this sort of stand out in a kind of creamy, luxurious way, I'm also going to add some hummus. So a lot of times when you see like super creamy, you know, pasta recipes, they add some cheese, they'll add some heavy cream, sometimes they'll add like sour cream. And I've done that too. Don't, don't get me wrong. I love my vegan sour cream, okay? 
But when I'm trying to go for something a little bit lighter or, you know, when I maybe don't want something quite as heavy, what I love to do is actually to use some hummus. In fact, hummus is sort of my like vegan hack for mayo. Because I always find like mayo, like while I love mayo, don't get me wrong, like some sandwiches, like really, like you can only do them right with mayo. But again, sometimes I feel like mayo can be a little bit heavy for me and it makes me feel like not great. You know what I mean? And so in order to avoid that sort of like uh, feeling after like a particular meal that might call for mayo, I just use hummus. It creates this level of creaminess that you would not believe. And on top of that, hummus is so good for you. It's got protein, it's got fiber, it's got all of the things that beans are known for being good at. And it's super creamy, delicious, and doesn't have that sort of heaviness that attends mayonnaise, sour cream, and things like that. So we just added our hummus. And we're just gonna go ahead, again, we're going to, Oh, that looks so good. It smells so good here. What's vegan sour cream made out of? You know, I honestly, the one that I use the most, it's called Tofuti. And presumably from the name, <laughs> it's made out of tofu. So if you're familiar with silken tofu or soft tofu, like super soft tofu, um, a lot of times people use it to add some extra protein in their smoothies and things like that. Um, you will know then, well, that actually makes a lot of sense because silken tofu has that really like creamy unctuousness um, that you may not realize if all you ever use is firm tofu or extra firm tofu. Okay, so I always like to add just a little bit of fresh herbs to my pasta. Um, here, I just kind of like go for whatever is like in season or available at my local grocery store. I saw some beautiful chives at my local grocery store. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna snip some chives over the top. Um, if you don't want to use scissors, kitchen shears, you don't have to. This is a very Korean ajama methodology to cooking as we use our scissors for so much. There we go. Okay, so I just added that. And then you do want to hit it with a little bit of cracked black pepper for extra smokiness here. Okay. So let's get back to that money shot so you can see just how beautiful this pasta is. And look how quickly it came together. Like we're not sitting here standing over our stove for five hours to make this dish. Look at how absolutely quickly it came together. Yeah, I'm getting hungry too. Luckily I get to eat this, <laughs> um, which is what I'm going to do. Now, if you are doing this for a dinner party and maybe you know calories and fat and all those things aren't a concern, they don't always have to be a concern. They certainly aren't always a concern for me. If it's not a concern, then this is when I would take a little bit of that extra virgin olive oil. You can measure out just a tiny little bit. I usually use the cap. I don't know if anyone else does that. Use the cap. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to drizzle it over the top of our pasta, just like that. And that is, again, just going to help bind this all together with this intense richness from the extra virgin olive oil. Okay, so, of course, like, I'm not going to, like, end this live without actually trying my own pasta. So let's let's give it a try, right? Ooh, oh my gosh, seriously? This is the best way to eat pasta, <laughs> in my opinion. Right out of the pan or the pot, I feel like that's always the most delicious. You know how like in Korean dramas, people are always eating jajangmyeon or ramyeon like right out of the pot? Like that's, that's, cause that's the best way to eat it. Okay, let's, okay, it's kind of hot. So I'm going to maybe Blow on it a little bit. Mm. Oh my God. That's so good. Mm. That is so good. And I really love the texture of the whole grain pasta. It's like, not as mushy, you know what I mean? Like regular pasta I feel like can get really mushy, especially if you go over on the cook time, then you better watch out. And once it's like reached the mushy level, you're like, I, I don't ever wanna eat pasta again. This actually retains a lot of bite. I really love it. The heat, whoo, the heat from the gochujang, it like gets you right in the mouth. It's like a sock in the mouth, man. 
but it's so good. It's like that really good heat. And then you get that intense flavor from the mushrooms. Mm. That is so good. So again, for those of you who are just joining, we just finished making um, the mushroom gochujang pasta from the Korean Vegan Meal Planner. This is such an easy dish to make. It's so delicious. And it really is one of those things where I just kind of pulled it together based upon whatever was in my pantry at the time. So um, definitely highly recommend making this dish. I'm gonna grab a couple of bowls because however much I enjoy eating out of the pot, simply not conducive when you have to share it with the person who lives with you. Ooh, oh yes, maple syrup. Um, so maple syrup, I would say is optional. Some people don't like to add maple syrup to their savory foods. So you don't have to add it here. However, if you do like a little extra sweetness, thank you so much for asking, uh, Angelica. If you do like a little extra sweetness in your savory foods, which sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, it really depends. Where I would add the maple syrup is when you added the gochujang. So when you add the tablespoon of gochujang is also when you add the maple syrup. And the reason for that is because gochujang actually already has sweetness in it. So if you get a good gochujang that you really like, that might be all the sweetness that you need. But if your gochujang tends to be more on the salty side as opposed to the sweet side, then add just a little bit of maple syrup to actually help with that. The other trick about maple syrup and sweetness, which I only discovered because one time I made something way too spicy. And so what I did was I added a little bit of maple syrup to balance out the spiciness and unbelievably, it actually grew less spicy and I was really happy with the result. So if you're one of those persons who maybe you overdid it a little bit <laughs> in your sauce on the gochujang, even after the fact at this point, you can add just, I would say half a teaspoon of maple syrup to help balance out some of that heat. So thank you, Angelica, for asking that. That's a really great question. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are going to try it. So again, this is the recipe from the Korean Vegan Meal Planner. Um, you can find a link to the recipe in the description of the live. So you guys will have it for all eternity for as long as you want so that you can make it as many times as you want. Um, all of my other recipes, they are part of the meal planner. I used to charge like $25 uh, for these virtual cooking lessons because, you know, it does like take a lot of time to like set it all up. But the great thing about the meal planner is that we charge like I think $9 a month or something like that or like a couple dollars a week. Less than like what I pay for my latte. Believe I just got a latte the other day. I don't know what is going on with these cafes. I just spent $7 on a small latte the other day. $7 on an oat milk latte the other day. It's insane. But anyway, that's what you pay for the meal planner and you get these monthly cooking demonstrations plus 2,000 recipes, 2,000 plus recipes at your disposal along with like uh, food coaches, newsletters and all sorts of other fun stuff. Really like I wanted to create sort of like a fun like VIP experience <laughs> for the Korean vegan community. Like people who are like really into these recipes or just want to hang with the rest of the community members. And that's really what the meal planner is designed to do. It's sort of a create, you know, create a community of people who like Korean food, like vegan food, um, like just cool people. I think I'm a cool person, hopefully. And that is what we're doing. Okay, so I'm going to add just a little bit more here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, oh my gosh, how good does that look? We're going to take some of this, our chickpeas. Put that here, all right. And then I'm gonna just add a little bit more color to each bowl by snipping just a few more chives into the fresh chives like that. Ooh, so good. Oh my gosh, look at how pretty that looks, guys. This looks so pretty. Okay. Doesn't that just look so beautiful and so easy to eat? All right, so I wanted to save a little bit of time towards the end. Don't worry, pasta is gonna be fine just in a few minutes. Mm, so good. To answer any questions that I didn't see in the chat. Since you're in LA now, 
you should try and get on ooh, Mythical Kitchen with Josh and Nicole. Okay, I will try that. Thank you for the tip uh, very much. I would rather watch you each week than, oh, than go to a movie. Carrie, that's like the nicest thing ever. <laughs> that's so sweet. I just joined, so I'm sorry if you said it already, but if you do not have gochujang, is there a substitute or where you can find it? Okay, so that's a great question. Um, Noir, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Let's answer the second one first. There is a YouTube video, it's the pinned video on my channel, The Korean Vegan, that talks about the Korean Vegan Pantry and it talks about all of these ingredients, like the, the soy sauce, the gochujang, and some of the other ones that we didn't even get to, and where you can find them inside of a Korean grocery store. But there's a bonus feature at the end, like the last five minutes, where I actually talk about where you can find them in the Western grocery store, so a non-Asian grocery store. Gochujang is one of those that I have been able to find at a variety of non-Asian grocery stores, whether it's Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, um, you know, Jewel, Osco, which is the, the store where I live, Mariano's. You can find them in so many locations. So I think, Noir, you'll be able to find it uh, if you try. However, if you're just like, I need to make this now and I don't have gochujang, if you do have sriracha sauce, that would be a good substitute for this. Um, another maybe good substitute would be um, tomato paste mixed together with a lot of either smoky, smoky paprika and cayenne. Or if you happen to have gochugaru, which is the chili powder kind of companion to gochujang, you can use that with tomato paste. So tomato paste has that same umami, it has that same thickness, you know, that paste. It's also the same color. Um, what you don't have in tomato paste, of course, is the heat. So you can make up for that by adding a really robust sort of sweet, if you can find one like smoked paprika um, chili powder. Hopefully that helps. Can you add, oh my God, totally, Angel Angel Angelica, yes. Absolutely, you can add kale, you can add spinach, whatever your favorite green is. If you want to add something like a broccoli, I would make sure that you cook the broccoli at the very beginning because you don't want that to be too hard. If you are like one of those persons who's nervous about the broccoli being undercooked, because some people have tummy issues with undercooked broccoli, luckily I'm not one of them, but some people do. What you can even do is blanch that in some boiling water and get that really nice and soft before you add it to your pasta. So those are all fantastic ideas to add if you want this to be a little bit greener. I think the day that I like happened to make this recipe, I didn't have any greens in my fridge. I know I'm embarrassed to admit that. Um, we have Trader Joe's here. Thank you. Oh, that's perfect. This looks really good. My question is, how has your day been? By the way, I love your messages and I really want to thank you for how much they have helped me. Well, first of all, pro angler, thank you so much for asking me how my day was. My day was good. I was really excited to join all of you and to show you how to make this pasta. That has been what's been keeping me going all day. I had a busy day, my Rudy. If you have watched my vlog, some of you are my vlog followers. You are intimately aware of my love affair with my dog, Rudy. Um, Rudy's 15 years old and he's not the young little puppy that he was. And so he's having some health issues and we had to deal with those this morning. So that's never fun, but he's doing fine now. He's fast asleep in his bed and hopefully he is on the mend. And then of course, I think I would be remiss if we didn't talk about the things that are happening in the United States right now, particularly in Texas. That's all very difficult for all of us to deal with as a country or even just as human beings. It's always hard to see families torn apart in that way. So that's also something that I've been grappling with. But one of the lovely things about this community is that I feel like it's a safe space for us to get together. And even if things are really, really hard on the outside, it's okay to have a little bit of fun here in this moment together and to feel safe and to make a delicious, delicious meal together. That is really important too. So thank you so much for asking. And does the Barilla brand of whole wheat pasta have the weird taste whole wheat pasta usually <laughs> Patrice, I find it overpowering and the dish doesn't taste the same. Okay, so Patrice, it's not gonna taste the same. I'm not gonna lie to you, okay? Like, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't like it when people do that. They're like, oh, veganism is like, you know, it tastes exactly the same as non-vegan. It doesn't, okay? Like, there, there are things that come pretty close, but there are some things that just miss the mark. <laughs> that's, that's the way life is. I will say, I have tried a lot of whole grain pastas. I've tried a lot of bean 
pastas, like high protein pastas. I've tried a lot of gluten free pastas. And of course, Anthony and I generally eat a lot of regular old plain Jane white pastas. So I've tried basically all of them. I would say this is a fantastic whole wheat pasta. I've had some that I'm like, I would never put that in my mouth again. <laughs> like, okay, like, okay, what is that? This is really, really great. My favorite, um, not refined, totally refined flour pasta is of course, Jovial. They make a fantastic gluten-free brand made out of brown rice flour, which I love. Unfortunately, we couldn't find any at the grocery stores here. We're, we're just getting acclimated to LA where we still don't really know our neighborhood yet. We've only really been to one grocery store. So we weren't able to find it at that particular one. So we went with the Barilla and I'm very pleased with it. I would, I would feel very confident in recommending it. Oh, you guys are so lovely. Thank you so much. Is that Sylvia? Your cookbook is amazing. So beautiful, well thought out. And your personal stories about your life and your family are wonderful. You are way above the Rachel Ray scale. Oh my God, Mr. Zani. That's like high praise because rachel ray is seriously a goddess in my book like she way she's so much better than like nigella um giada all of those like who i'm so beautiful and no like i just love rachel ray because she's like me everyday girl just trying to make it work that's like what she's like she's like i'm busy i'm losing my voice i've got a bajillion things going on but i've got enough time for 30 minutes to make a beautiful pasta dish or a beautiful salad or a beautiful rice bowl. And she is such an inspiration to me. I, I hope one day in my life I get to meet her and tell her about how much she's changed my life. Uh, Nigella is pretty awesome too though. No, and no, totally. She's also breathtakingly beautiful. Like every time I see her, I'm like, how is she so pretty? She's got the perfect skin. And she's so fun on like Bravo Top Chef when she's like a judge and stuff like that. But like I said, I've always felt her style of cooking was a little bit too intimidating for me. Like she was just a little bit too sophisticated. I really needed something that was like right at the ground level, right there on the cutting board where I felt like I could just meet her. And that was what Rachel did for me. That's hopefully what I'm able to do for all of you. Your crunchy garlic tofu recipe is so delicious. Oh my God, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you like it. I love it too. It's a family favorite. It's it's always, always a really good dish to make, especially if you're trying to impress people who are not into tofu. That is a great one to make. Jovio pasta is delish. All right, um, Cream Vegan, I wanna thank you for the regular reminders to cherish my parents and to choose our perspectives with our family. We all tell our own stories to ourselves. You remind us to choose well. Oh my gosh. Well, that is so beautiful. Thank you so much for saying that. I, you know, I have learned from YouTube and from TikTok and Instagram that not everybody is blessed with both parents. And even if they are, that they may not be blessed with the kind of relationship that I have with them. I know that. Um, and I always wake up and say, I'm so grateful that I have a mom and dad who are as supportive and loving and wonderful as I do. But I hope even if your relationship with your mom and dad isn't what it should be or what you want it to be, or maybe they're not even in your lives anymore, that you do have people in your lives, whether it's your grandparents, your aunts, a really close friend, a mentor, somebody that you can sit down and collect their stories because you deem them worthy of collecting and keeping in your heart because that's exactly what I did with my mom and dad. And it's made all the difference. The way you weave your personal stories into your food video, well, all of you guys can do it. You're probably already doing it when you invite friends over for a glass of wine and maybe some snacks, or when you have a dinner party, or when it's family time and you've got a big gathering you know, for the holidays, or even when it's just dinner time with your kids, you're all talking during those meals. Those are all stories. You are all storytellers and you are all eaters. It's just a matter of being intentional and being aware that you're doing it so that you can remember all of those feelings, right? Okay, I am going to sign off now. It has been such a pleasure hanging with the TKV Meal Planner community as well as the TKV YouTube community. This has been such a wonderful marriage of communities, if I do say so myself. For those of you who are not a TKV Meal Planner member, uh, the link to the recipe for what we just did, the mushroom cochichang pasta, is in the description 
From there, you can also learn more about how to become a meal planner member. Like I said, it's a fantastic, fantastic program. Highly recommend. But otherwise, I hope you have a safe and happy day as much as you can. And if it isn't a happy day, that's okay. That's totally okay. I hope whatever it is that you're doing, you do get a chance to settle down and eat something that makes you feel a little bit better about everything that's happening, okay? All right, I'm going to sign off and we will do this again soon, okay? All right, I am trying to figure out how to sign off, but of course I can't. <laughs>